Welcome to What's the Born One, your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Cox. And I am Onika McLean, and we have a treat for you. We have a treat for you in the most treatiest of ways, right? <laughs> <laughs> we have Miss Cindy Rain on deck. She's a singer, songwriter, and she's here to promote her latest EP, The Mask. Thanks yes. for having me. Yes, Welcome. thank you so much for coming. God, I'm I'm so impressed, and you have not opened your mouth yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so tell us about your music, like. Right. So my music is acoustic soul, but some of the influences are classical. There's some Caribbean influences. There's some jazz influences. There's some Latin music influences. There's a little bit of everything that, you know, kind of melds together. Like New York, kind of. Exactly. Right. So are, do you have any Caribbean background? Yeah, both of my parents are from Trinidad. Me oh. too, yeah! I knew she wanted to cook up in a pot. I knew she wanted to do a Caribbean cook up. I can feel it. I can feel it. Yes. Okay. 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 So I ain't saying nothing else. <laughs> I'ma just sit here. Because I heard Etta James yes. in your yes. music. Yeah. I was like, this is very nostalgic woman. and just beautiful. Just it's beautiful. That's the word. Like, right. Her music is what beautiful sounds like. Oh, thank you. That yeah. Like I was like, oh goodness, lady. Okay. Yeah. So talk about kind of the influences behind that, like in terms of like, how did you come up with that sound? Yeah. And the mask, like what is that, what is that title? What is that about? So <laughs> the, the story of the mask was that uh, my business coach gave me a branding exercise and she asked me to reach out to my community and to ask them to describe me in three words. Mm -hmm. And most of the responses that I got were some variation of sunny and upbeat and positive and happy. And mm -hmm. I was like, um, that's not what the music necessarily sounds like. There was a lot of stuff in minor keys. There were a lot of like, you know, songs that were written out of pain. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what's this disconnect between how people see me and what I'm really feeling. And I right. realized that the disconnect was me. Like I was actually putting on a mask. I was walking around with a goofy smile on my face all mm -hmm. the time. Right. Um, because I was, I felt uncomfortable expressing dark emotions. Mm -hmm. So, right. Um, right. you know, nice. in realizing that I was basically really fake. <laughs> I sat down at the piano <laughs> hey. and I wrote this song about like coming to terms with the fact that I was wearing a mask most of the time. And, that was the last song I, that I wrote out of the five songs on the EP. And when I wrote that, that's when I started to see the common threads between all the songs that I, I had already written. And I was like, oh, this is it. This is this is the EP. This is the title song and we're done. Right. Um, nice. The sound was crafted in England because I, I, when I moved back to New York after being in North Carolina for 10 years, the advice Ooh. that I got in working on my debut album was find someone who's in the industry who's already making the kind of music that you like and pay them whatever it costs just like figure it out oh, um okay because i had spent many years and just for a, to find a producer you mean yeah for mm -hmm. the producer okay because i had spent many years like since I was a teenager, I'd been in basement studios throughout Brooklyn trying to, you know, find my sound, and I just was not able it to find like what clicking. I wanted. It wasn't. So a few years ago, um, someone told me that I reminded them of Asha, a French Nigerian singer songwriter. Hmm. Oh, she just talked about her. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So um, I went and listened to her music, and I had found her last album. And I followed the Google trail and I found the producer who produced it. His name was Blair, McC Blair McKitchen. Mm -hmm. He's in Hastings, uh, UK. And I reached out to his manager and I said, hey, I want to record with you. Uh -huh. And um, he said yes. So nice, when nice. I got him so on the phone. Just ask for what you want sometimes you guys you get listening it. to this? <laughs> yeah. okay. but, but before we even go there, like it, there's, there's an element of persistence because when I reached out the first time, there was no response. And I was like, oh, they don't want to talk to little old me. They don't want to oh, record no. me. My feelings were hurt. So my right. coach was like, no, you need to follow up. So there was definitely an element of, you know, reaching out. And, so how and many times did you have to follow up before he, you actually got him to respond? Um, I don't remember. Maybe like two or three times. It wasn't. A, it wasn't a lot. I okay. just had to do it more than once. Yeah, I had right. to get over myself. 
um, <laughs> and just realize that people oh, have wow. other schedules that you know have I'm nothing to do with me. To get into a comedy club, I went right. twelve times. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> like 12 times. Wow. wow. Before they actually called you. Yeah. And then one day I just kind of went and they were like, oh, just get up there. <laughs> All right, you're hired. Like 12 wow. times is a lot of times. Yeah. It is. That's persistent. It is. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, this is, <laughs> right. this is not this what is I'm it. hearing from, from your generation. And I am. And I am so pleased. Oh, yeah. <laughs> People do. Millennials do. Have I'm not saying that they don't. I'm just saying, you know, the common thread is instant gratification. Mm. And that's just not always the case. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. So that's the mask. Yeah, so when I um, reached out to him and I told him how I found him, uh -huh. he was like, oh, you like Asha? Well, let's get Asha's band. So, Whoa, so he called out. all of the musicians that were on Asha's band, and they are the musicians who played on my EP. And oh my gosh, the, wow, um, look at that. The bass player, uh, he also plays uh, another stringed instrument. I don't remember whether it's the violin, but he he did all the string arrangements. He got his his uh, father and a, a couple of um, people, the, a few um, string players, to do like the live string arrangements on the album. Mm -hmm. So that's where like the classical, almost musical theater oh, kind of element comes where, from. Okay. So yeah, we started off just in the room, just jamming and just seeing what happened. And then- And you went to UK to do this? Yes. For three weeks, I stayed with the producer. Oh my gosh. Um, and- Did you just spend all your money? Well, I did a crowdfunding campaign to fund that. Nice. Um, I raised so twenty thousand dollars. Wow, you just made it happen. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. it Are was... you kidding me? Oh my god! I just want to wrap you up in, the <laughs> in a motivational kit <laughs> and be like, mm -hmm. "Let's do this. This. <laughs> this right here. This. It was the you scariest get... thing I had ever done up until that point. But you figured but it, it out. But it worked. Figured it out. I think this business coach lady is like she a god. She is the she is the truth. She sounds like yeah. <laughs> you want to say something else, but you. No, not exactly. But you know, she 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 knows when to be firm with me and just be like, Cindy, get your life. And I'm like, all right, I guess I'm gonna get my life now. Oh my god. <laughs> so that was like a dream, kind of kind of like a dream come true. So what did your friends and your family say? And you're like, I'm going to the UK and I'm gonna, you know, do this. <laughs> they, what did they say? At which point? Before or after the money was raised? Oh, oh no. before, before. Before? Everyone was looking at me like, you trying to raise how much money? Are you sure about this, Cindy? And he was like, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Right. right well, you, you know, you know. Because if you don't believe in you, who the hell else is going to believe in you? That exactly. is the truth. Yeah. You and your biggest support. Because I'm telling you, when we looked at your press kit, we're, I was like, yeah. Like, she on, is point. on point. On point. Oh, yeah. Thank you. On point. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thoroughly, impressed. Thoroughly impressed. Caribbean girl. Yeah. yeah. I don't no, think yeah. it has anything to do with my question. You know what? You know, I'm the daddy saying, of people that they just, be doing can I, shit. Can I just big up my people for a minute? <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You would hate us, not the haters. I'm sorry. All right. So, you know. T.T. Okay. T. money, T.T. T. money. I know about that, T.T. Oh, money. you know. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so guys, keep it locked. We're going to come back with part two with our amazing interview with Cindy Rain. Keep it locked. Press the ball, press the ball.